Hello, and welcome back to my humble show. I am your host for today and every other day, the Articulate Thinker. Hopefully, here to bring you art articles and articulation straight from Articulation Station. So be sure to like, subscribe, and enjoy the ride. Don't forget to turn on those bell notifications while you're at it. So this news broke yesterday. I'm talking about Trump's latest indictment. Former president and current presidential candidate Donald Trump, of course, was indicted once again. This time, courtesy of Fulton County, Georgia, and more specifically, Fannie Willis. All right, so like I said, this news broke yesterday. I got to catch up before I keep up. I have a lot of stuff pulled up here in front of me, and I'm going to try to go through it, react to it as much as I possibly can. Or at least I'm going to try to cover as much as I possibly can in a short amount of time. I don't have any of the most recent headlines pulled up in front of me. So I'll I'll get into some of that at the end of all of this if I have time. Speaking of time, I tried to record this show on my lunch break earlier. While on my lunch break earlier. But uh, yeah, I just wasn't feeling it. So I had to call it quits for a few hours. And I'm back, I'm back. And I'm going to start right here, right now with this screenshot, which I posted to Twitter, or shall I say X, just a little while ago. Here you go. Imagine if Donald Trump fled the country. Not going to happen, obviously, but imagine what I just now realized is that in that very short caption, I had precisely one typo. I said, imagine of Donald Trump. Shame on me, but I was in a hurry because I was at work and I just posted it as fast as possible. Quick, fast, and in a hurry before I scurried back off to work. Well, I was already at work, so didn't have to scurry very far, but here's what the screenshot says. I believe this was a New York Times article headline. Trump indictment in Georgia ex-president has 10 days to surrender for arraignment. Yeah, didn't mean to read that like a run-on sentence. Donald Trump and 18 others were indicted by an Atlanta grand jury late Monday. They face sweeping racketeering charges stemming from efforts to overturn the 2020 presidential election. So yeah, that's where we're starting. Although, contrary to what I said about not having the recent, the more recent Headlines pulled up. This is a more recent headline, so... I lied. Uh, but yeah. Starting at the beginning, back to the basics here, which isn't all that basic, if you think about it. 100 pages, nearly, of indictment material, charges, counts, in regards to the 19 defendants and the... Well, the 41 different accusations, allegations, or whatever you want to call them. The counts, the charges here. And I'll I'll break that down to the best of my ability. Silly me. I'm no expert on these matters. I'm no lawyer. I'm no attorney. But I like turning the page and seeing what is next. Digging in and seeing what I can dig up. But yeah. Let's see here. What did I want to say? I wanted to say that, once again, this news broke yesterday. And I wanted to cover it then, but I, I figured I would see what some other legal minds had to say about it. So I I gave it a day before figuring out what I wanted to say. And that's why I'm here uh, now, ready to talk about this. But I'm sure there will be much more... Uh, in the very near or far future. Especially since she wants to to uh, get the trial started. Within six months or some nonsense like that. Quite the undertaking. But that's uh, that's on Fannie Willis, I suppose. We'll see if she can uh, bite like she can bark, I guess. Bark, not bark. But yeah. I did record two shows late last night, one about the fires in Maui and one about an explosion of a home in Pennsylvania. So if you want to 
If you want to hear me talk about something other than, well, solely politics, political matters, go check out those two shows if you haven't already done so. But yes, signed. Grand jury four person. Okay. Thinking out loud here. But I seem to recall a grand jury four person going around doing media hits a few months ago. This woman who was extremely quirky. Yeah, she decided to go and get herself a couple of interviews in which she essentially gloated over the opportunity to indict Donald Trump and other people who she would not specifically name, but she kept making all these implications, and then when she was asked about it, she had all these, uh, yeah, obviously quirky expressions, and her her bias was, was showing. Her bias was glowing, but not in a good way. And it was so... It was so obvious that she was saying things that could hurt her own case that she kind of disappeared into the background again. So is this that same grand jury four person? I obviously can't even read the name here. Is that something Bill? Maybe there are multiple grand jury four persons? Or maybe that was someone from a different case. I'm pretty sure it had to do with, well... The looming uh, Georgia case. But uh, I'm just reminded of that particular woman. I want to find those old videos of her interviews and put up an edit, a compilation on my Articulate Thinker News Clips channel because there was something off about her. And I mean, like, way off about her. And if she is involved in this at all, well, I just don't trust any of it. I don't, to begin with. I don't trust Fanny Willis, and I say that as someone who doesn't particularly trust Donald Trump, but I'm going to call it like I see it across the board, fairly squarely, hopefully never contrarily, but feel free to disagree with me. Let me know in the comments below what you think, what you know. If you're an expert, unlike me, well, then I would be happy to see, be happy to hear your thoughts on the matter. Any feedback is much appreciated overall, though. I'm trying to get this show going, so let me get this particular show going. Fulton County Superior Court. Indictment filed. There's the date. Clerk of court name. Clerk number. Fulton Superior Court. And so on and so forth. Here we go. The state of Georgia versus Donald John Trump. Rudolph William Louise Giuliani. Or shall I just say... Rudy Giuliani, obviously an attorney for Donald Trump, among other things. Most of these people, among the 19, are, or at least have been, attorneys in one form or fashion. Uh, but yeah, I don't know who all of them are. Some of the names I'm only vaguely familiar with. Others, more so. John Charles Eastman here. Mark Randall Meadows. Donald Trump's. Uh, previous chief of staff. That's a name I'm more familiar with. Kenneth John uh, Cheesebro. Jeffrey Bozert Clark. Jenna Lynn Ellis. She worked with Rudy Giuliani some after the election. I believe in trying to pursue some uh, legal arguments about election interference, uh, or however you want to describe that, you know, in regards to the claims about a rigged election, stolen election, yada, 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 bing, bing, boom, or Ray Stallings, Smith the Third, Robert David Cheeley, Michael A. Roman, David James Schaefer, Sean Micah, uh, Tresher Still, Stephen Clifford Lee, Harrison William Prescott Floyd, Trevian C. Cutty, Sydney Catherine Powell, uh, Miss Kraken herself, who did not bring the goods. She did not back up what she was saying at the time. She seems pretty fraudy to me. But everyone deserves their day in court. Not that 
all of these people should be there in the first place. I mean, I don't want to chalk this up to entirely being an attack on freedom of speech. But I think overall this case is quite a reach. This indictment is quite a reach. To each their own opinion, though. Uh, Kathleen Alston Latham, Scott Graham, Hall, Misty Hampton, a.k.a. Emily Misty Hayes. And if I scroll on down, over here on the right, you see in your sights the final charge of perjury, number 41 on the list. Scrolling all the way back up, most of these have something to do with falsehoods or conspiracies or a combination of the two, which is really what this is all about. And in that sense, it does have an awful lot to do with the freedom of speech. But when it's wrapped in a bow of some kind of conspiring, or in this case, what they would call racketeering, it's a little bit different of a ball game. So, starting at one here, violation of the Georgia RICO Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organizations Act. That's what RICO is all about, R-I-C-O. I've had to learn a bit about these terms in the last 24 hours, to be perfectly honest with you. But over here, under each name on the left, you will see the counts listed by number, which counts apply to which person. So for Donald Trump, you have 1, 5, 9, 11, 13, 15, 17, 19, 27 through 29, and 38 through 39. And you can just match that up with the numbers and the, the counts, the charges over here on the right. To the left, to the right, the left, right, left. Okay, I'm not going to go through all of those. Some of them are a bit repetitious, if you ask me. Mumbo-jumbo. I mean, it's it's legal speak. It's very complicated, partly because so many people are being brought up or brought in for prosecution or attempted prosecution here. Unlike in the Jack Smith indictment out of D.C., which was a bit different, we have... Federal on the one hand, state on the other. Though, I believe Fanny Willis has tried to bring claims in regards to other states into this case, into this indictment. Which seems a little bit outside of her lane if it's within the state. And she's like, let's talk about these other states. Okay, now she's really reaching. So we'll see if all of this holds up in court, even if it does, even if they're found guilty. I don't know. Maybe it'll end up in the Supreme Court and get overturned, overruled. Uh, again, this is a nearly 100-page document. This is the indictment document, and I have yet to go through all of it. I don't know if that will, will happen, but it's here, and if you if you want it, well, I can send it your way. The grand juror selected, chosen, and sworn for the county of Fulton to wit. Here's a list of names here with a couple of them redacted. Some people were saying that that was a sign of unethical or improper uh, filing of documents. But I don't know. That's, that's a back and forth that I'm not fully understanding, so... I'll stay out of that for the time being. More thorough explanations of all the counts. If you just keep reading on down, what we have here is an introduction. Defendant Donald John Trump lost the United States presidential election held on November 3rd of 2020. One of the states he lost was Georgia. Trump and the other defendants charged in this indictment refused to accept that Trump lost and they knowingly and willfully joined a conspiracy to unlawfully change the outcome of the election in favor of Trump. Did they now? That conspiracy contained a common plan and purpose to commit two or more acts of racketeering activity in Fulton County, Georgia, elsewhere in the state of Georgia and in other states. So already they're bringing in terminology about other states. Sorry if my face is in the way of any of that if you were actually trying to read it for yourself. The Enterprise, 
Oh, man. Speaking of enterprises, let me go back up before I get lost in all the, the weeds of this document here and hone in on the word racketeering and the term acronym RICO because like me, you may not be all that familiar with it. Let me see what else I have here on that. But yes, violation of the Georgia RICO, Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act. I believe Fannie Willis does have a personal history of prosecuting people on on charges such as these, but not in regards to politics. At least not like this. Election politics. So this is, I'd say, highly unusual, a bit unprecedented. And someone who is an expert on RICO law, racketeering law, such as Alan Dershowitz, who, you know, think what you may about him, but he is an expert on these matters. He has his own fair share of history and experience with such things. And he said that it's all completely misapplied and that she is actually lying when she says that she is going to pursue this on a six-month time frame. Like she's going to bring this all to court in front of the camera, I might add, within six months. He says she's just lying to people's faces. She knows she can't make that happen, but she's claiming she will anyway. Uh, but hey, hey, I think his point there is that this whole case, this whole indictment is ultimately about what are perceived to be lies. And yet she, even in bringing this forward, is herself lying to the public. So whether or not that is explicitly true, I would say that everyone involved in this is a bit of a hypocrite in one way or another, including the people who are pushing prosecution here. So uh, here's something I posted on X earlier. Twitter. Does racketeering uh, Rico truly apply to Donald Trump, etc.? Or is it all as much of a stretch as it seems? So I took a couple of screenshots from the internet. I think I posted this while I was at work as well. Yeah, early this morning. Just for some basic information. Okay, so in regards to... Uh, racketeering, which I'll start with. Key takeaways. Racketeering is the act of acquiring a business through illegal activity, operating a business with illegal delivered or derived, not delivered, well, maybe delivered, but derived income, illegally derived income, or using a business to commit legal, make that illegal acts. Goodness. Can't type. Can't read either. The U.S. government introduced the Racketeer Influence and Corruption Organizations Act in October of 1970 to contain racketeering. And I believe it was used primarily in regards to, uh, for example, the mafia and mafia-esque behavior. But now it is being more broadly applied to politics and political candidates in the case of Donald, Don Donald John Trump. Yeah, not Donald Don Trump or Donald Don Trump, just Donald John Trump. The Federal Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organizations Act originated in 1970 as a tool to fight organized crime. The law enabled prosecutors to target people in positions of authority within a criminal organization, not just lower-level people doing the dirty work. So would you call the Trump administration a criminal organization? Would you? Could you? And even if you could, should you? What else do I have here? <clears throat> Getting into the clips. Here's a clip um, from Sheriff Pat Labatt out of Fulton County, Georgia, stating that Donald Trump will have his mugshot taken. So I have this and a couple of other random clips, I believe. We are following our part, our, our normal practices. And so it doesn't matter your status. We, are, we have mugshots ready for you. We are following our part, our, our normal practices. So I wanted to play part of that twice. He said, normal, the word normal. Well, I'll quote Bernie Sanders and say, 
These are not normal times. That's a clip of him I had in mind. Not, not him saying something about this, but saying something about something else. And he said, These are not normal times. So these are not normal times. This is not a normal case, not a normal indictment. But with all the excitement, I'm not surprised that they want to get his mugshot. After all, none of the other prosecutors have. None of the other courts have. So this one is going to be a bit different than all the rest. I, I believe cameras are going to be involved for all the world to see. They're going to put this on full display. Maybe Fanny Willis just wants her time in the spotlight. That would explain why she, well, not only wants to, to try all of these people, she wants to try them all at once, according to her. And I'll I'll read about that here in a moment, but I have I have one more clip to play for you. This one is of Fanny Willis herself saying she intends to try the 19 defendants of the indictment together. There you have it. Have you had any contact with the So she is being asked if she is going to try all of the defendants together. Do I intend to try the 19 defendants in this indictment together? Yes. Look at that face. Yes. And then she looks around the room ready for the next question. Yes. Very confidently, she says. So I said, wow, this Fanny Willis seems even more arrogant than Donald Trump. And which has... Well over 100 likes, so I'm proud of my tweet or my post, whatever I'm supposed to call it these days. And then someone said in response to me, Wow, any intelligent, grounded, strong, direct woman can often be characterized that way. She's not arrogant. She is simply comfortable, resting in her extremely strong, evidence-saturated position. <laughs> She is a woman to be admired, and by those she's prosecuting likely feared. Okay, this this comes straight out of ChatGPT. Sounds very robotic to me, but I said in response to that, almost as comfortable as Stacey Abrams endlessly claiming her election was stolen from her. Because, voila, behold the hypocrisy of politicians. Yeah. Stacey Abrams, straight out of Georgia as well. About that, here's this from Libs of TikTok. A couple of screenshots with a caption. When is Stacey Abrams getting indicted in Georgia for attempting to overthrow election results? So here are those two screenshots. Both from Fox News, it looks like. Starting with this one, Stacey Abrams again claims she won Georgia governor's race. I'm not a good sport, she said. <laughs> Stacey Abrams praised on The View for not conceding election defense, saying she won Georgia race in 2018. So do you think, do you think Fannie Willis will ever go after her? Scam likely. <laughs> Sham likely. In other words, no, of course not. Because they are of the same bias. They are of the same political affiliation. I'm not even saying that that anyone should go after Stacey Abrams. I'm just saying. For years, even even now, I believe, she is she is still maintaining her position that she had the election stolen from her. And by the way, if she changes up on that, that is an admission of her previously lying. So that's something that Donald Trump hasn't done. As obnoxious as it is that he continues to say what he continues to say, well, he has been consistent about that much. And there is no proof, as far as I can see, of him being a liar on any of it. It is what he sincerely believes. So, when you have a case of conspiracy that's built solely upon the idea that he was lying all this time, and yet you have no evidence that he was actually saying anything he didn't believe, that's problematic. And that actually plays into the January 6th case out of D.C., uh, courtesy of Jack Smith as well. You know, these two cases, though one is more federal and one is more state, um, they they do have their similarities. But it's almost like, 
it's almost like she's trying to cover everything that Jack Smith didn't. I mean, it's almost like Fanny Willis is trying to cover everything that Jack Smith didn't. I don't believe he indicted anyone else. Though there were co-conspirators listed, and my question at the time was, is the fact that co-conspirators are listed, yet only Donald Trump is being prosecuted, is that proof of a political attack? You know? Like, an attempt to prevent specifically Donald Trump from becoming the president. But in this case, can't ask the same question because there's a whole list of defendants, co-conspirators, in other words, who are on the list. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I said, not good. She'll just identify as innocent. <laughs> in regards to Stacey Abrams, I did listen to like a five-minute compilation of her claiming that she was the rightful governor of Georgia. So there's that. And then there's like a 20-minute compilation, I believe. Is it 20 minutes? I believe it's 20 minutes. 20 minutes of prominent Democrats, D.C. Democrats mostly, claiming that previous elections were rigged, whether it was the Bush-Gore election or the Trump-Clinton election. An awful lot of Democrats who have now switched up their moral stance, their ethical stance now. You know, they were previously claiming that elections were rigged, stolen, you name it. And in some cases, even objecting to the results, to the certification of those elections. Huh. Go figure. Okay, so, you know, because I'm going to try to be as balanced as possible here. Here's something that was tweeted out by ALX. Uh, telling people to watch a televised hearing on social media is now illegal, he said. And here's a screenshot from Act 22. And this is from the aforementioned document. And there's a quotation in it. On or about the third day of December 2020, Donald John Trump caused to be tweeted, caused to be tweeted from the Twitter account at Real Donald Trump. Georgia hearings now on OANN. Amazing. And then it continues. This was an overt act in furtherance of conspiracy. So what ALX is saying is that according to the indictment, Trump simply tweeting or causing to be tweeted that people should watch Georgia hearings on television was an illegal act of conspiracy. Well, to be fair, to be square, in and of itself, this is not being called uh, illegal. Like, on its face, there would be nothing illegal about this. But what they are doing is lumping this in as evidence of the overall illegal activity or conspiracy. So in a sense, it is it is being considered illegal. In a sense, it is not being considered illegal it just depends on how you how you phrase it, how you frame it, I guess. But either way, it is very concerning, to say the least, that something as simple as this could be used in an attempt to throw a former and potentially future president of the United States in jail. Just him saying, hey, watch TV. See what you'll see. I'm surprised they haven't gone so far as to to use his quote about being peaceful and patriotic <laughs> as more evidence of him inciting violence. I'm just saying that would be really, really a stretch. And they're making so many stretches here that I would not be surprised if they, <laughs> well, if they got their yoga on and stretched that out as well. Not to say that everything he said was as reasonable as as him telling uh, protesters to march peacefully and patriotically. There's a lot of things he said and did that I wouldn't have said or did if I was in his position. Of course, I'm not, and I never will be. But when it comes to prosecution, political prosecution, potentially political persecution, man, these are sketchy territories, and it does have a lot to do with uh, freedom of speech here. So here's an article from Post Millennial. This one is a little bit old. Published yesterday. 
not that old. It's just that the news cycle moves so fast. People have been talking about this all day to day. But I, I still have to catch up and keep up with what there was from yesterday. Breaking Fannie Willis fails to answer why identical indictment appeared, then was deleted before grand jury voted. So about that. I don't believe I have referenced it yet until now. <clears throat> there was an indictment which was leaked out in one way or another before the grand jury even voted on the indictment, you know, on the releasing of the indictment. And then it was retracted. And then it appeared that once the actual indictment was revealed, they were almost identical, if not outright identical. And she was asked about it in her somewhat short press briefing, in which she didn't have much to say about much. It, well, she didn't have much to say about this either. D.A. Willis refused to explain how the indictment appeared Monday morning and then was deleted. A Fulton County clerk said it was fictitious. Oh, was it? So, who fictitionalized it, if that's a word? Who made it up, if that's what you're saying happened? Article from Libby Emmons specifically. Always got to shout her out. Fulton County D.A. Fanny Willis held a press conference after the indictment on RICO charges was released in Georgia. The lengthy charges served against Trump and 18 of his associates involved the RICO Act and are primarily regarding alleged conspiracies. Primarily. Every individual charged, Willis said, in the indictment is charged with one count of violating Georgia's Racketeer-Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act through the participation in a criminal enterprise in Fulton County. I wonder what the rest of those defendants have to say about that. Did they, even if, even if Donald Trump was lying this whole time, were they? What did they actually believe? Did they believe that they were participating in a criminal enterprise? Or were they doing what they believed was right? Aside from um, Sidney Powell, who I don't like. <laughs> uh, hope she has her day in court as well. And by hoping, I, I just mean that I hope. I hope for justice. Even if I don't like the individual, I feel like these days, many people are fine with someone not receiving justice as long as they don't like that person. Even in the legal system, even among lawyers and attorneys, prosecutors, in this case, seems like it's very selective. To say the least. Uh, but yes, continuing on with Willis's quote. And no, I'm not talking about Bruce Willis, unfortunately. That would be much cooler. Fanny Willis. Uh, Violating Georgia's Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act through participation in criminal enterprise in Fulton County, Georgia, and elsewhere to accomplish the illegal goal of allowing Donald John Trump to f fees... I think that's supposed to be freeze. Freeze the presidential term of office beginning on January 2021. A couple of typos in there. Glad I'm not the only one. <clears throat> so, just as that, uh, that tweet about watching television, nothing that was done, as far as I can tell, in and of itself, would be illegal. It's just that because... It has all been lumped together as this one big conspiracy from this alleged criminal enterprise that things which there is a legal process for are now being considered illegal. <sighs> which is why I call all of this a bit of a stretch or a reach. We'll see how it goes in court, though. Willis further explained her theory of crimes allegedly committed saying specifically the participants in association took various actions in Georgia and elsewhere to block the counting of the votes in the presidential electors who were certified as the winners of Georgia's 2020 general election. And with that being said, uh, this could bring into question many of the claims or conspiracies, either or, 
about the legitimacy of the election. I mean, because if the defendants get to defend themselves, you you would imagine that they would get to bring up some things that maybe didn't even get their day in court previously, originally, back when these lawyers were trying to to take their cases to court and in hopes of overturning the election. So maybe maybe more will get rehashed than Fannie Willis would like, but at the same time, considering who at least appears to be involved in all of this from top to bottom, I, I don't know that people are going to be unbiased or balanced at all. I don't know that people are going to be balanced at all. I think just by the look of this, they're throwing the book, the biggest book possible, at all of these individuals, hoping that something will stick. Because they don't want to turn the page on this issue, just like Donald Trump doesn't want to turn the page on his claims, uh, regardless of how conspiratorial they are about the election. Okay, so Fannie Willis also said, As you examine the indictment, you will see acts that are identified as overt acts and those that are identified as predicate acts. Yeah, mostly that. Sometimes called acts of racketeering activity. Overt acts are not necessarily crimes under Georgia law in isolation, but are alleged to be acts taken in furtherance of the conspiracy. So that's mostly what it's all about. They, they say up at the top, conspiracy and then here's the evidence down below and it's all these acts which on their face in and of themselves are not illegal you know if they are isolated they are not crimes but they are considered to be furtherance of the predetermined conspiracy and i could be wrong about all of this maybe it's not predetermined maybe there there is a here here a there there as they say Maybe Donald Trump is as guilty as they come. And, and by the way, this case is different than the others. I mentioned the January 6th case. I'm not very optimistic about the, the fairness of that case. But uh, speaking of the... Speaking of the uh, Jack Smith cases, there's also the Florida case about the classified documents. I'm a little bit more skeptical of Donald Trump's behavior in that. And I haven't really taken a hard stand in in support of him. And I don't really support him all that much in the first place, though I did vote for him. So, yeah. Just call it like I see it. <clears throat> As for New York, the uh, cases there, both criminal and civil, well, I won't talk about those. I have already done that enough in the past. Many occurred in Georgia, and some occur in other jurisdictions and are included because the grand jury believes they were part of the illegal effort to overturn the results of Georgia's 2020 presidential election. She goes on here. The acts identified as predicate acts or acts of racketeering activity are crimes that are alleged to have been committed in furtherance of the criminal enterprise acts. The racketeering activity are also charged as separate counts in the indictment against those who are alleged to have committed them. All elections in our nation are administered by the states, which are given the responsibility of ensuring a fair process and an accurate counting of the votes. That includes elections for presidential electors, Congress, state officials, and local offices. The state's role in this process is essential to the functioning of our democracy. Democracy! Yeah, so Hillary Clinton, speaking of election deniers, was on Rachel Maddow's show talking about how uh, Donald Trump nearly destroyed democracy and, and how he would have destroyed democracy had he won his election. Though I guess we wouldn't have had to worry about any of this now, would we? Of course, she was talking about how sad she was that this was happening, but also she was laughing about it happening. So, yeah, more hypocrisy for you. <laughs> Both her and Rachel Maddow were big on election illegitimacy claims and Russian collusion claims. Typical of the media, not just the politicians. More quotations here. Georgia, like every state, 
has laws that allow those who believe that, that results of an election are wrong, whether because of intentional wrongdoing or unintentional error, to challenge those results in our state courts. Okay, fair enough. Square enough. The indictment alleges that rather than abide by Georgia's legal process for election challenges, the defendants engaged in a criminal racketeering enterprise to overturn Georgia's presidential election uh, result subsequent to the indictment, as is the normal process in Georgia law. The grand jury issued arrest warrants for those who are charged. I'm giving the defendants an opportunity to voluntarily surrender no later than noon on Friday the 25th day of August 2023, and that's where the 10-day time frame uh, comes in. <clears throat> Let's see, I had a had a point I wanted to make here about the legal process for election challenges. So this all kind of roots back to Donald Trump's phone call, as so many things often root back to when it comes to Donald Trump. <laughs> phone call is always involved, isn't it? Where he was asking Brad Raffensperger, etc., for additional votes. I mean, he was saying that additional votes should be found, and that was taken to mean, oh, he was he was telling them to, to switch votes or something. He was telling them to act illegally. He was outright stating uh, on record that they should just flip votes or something like that. But but also, there's the argument to be made that he was just saying, listen, there are problems with the current votes, and some of them have not been counted or have been counted incorrectly. They actually belong to me, so let's fix that. Let's figure that out and fix that. So, you know, that's much more justifiable. And the problem is for Fannie Willis and her grand jury is they, they, cannot, they cannot prove that Donald Trump's state of mind was as they say. So, again, back to freedom of speech. Freedom of thought, even. Maybe it's not about that. Maybe it's just about what you can or can't prove in regards to motive. And that's kind of what this is all about. Because if you're conspiring, uh, logic would have you uh, realize that a motive is required. And if you can't, if you can't prove the motive, then how can you actually prove the conspiring, the conspiracy? I guess if the conspiracy itself is so blatant that it it reveals how obvious the motive is but it's it's just not that simple i mean there were people all across the country and still are who believed that there were issues significant issues with the election enough to to hold it up i'm not saying i advocated for that or think it should have happened but i'm saying that a lot of people do with reason from big tech interference to, I, I guess, voter dumps in the middle of the night. You know, different things that people like to talk about. I'm just saying, if if one attorney or one advisor comes up to Trump and says, hey, this is the most perfect election ever, just go with it. And another comes up to him and says, hey, this is rigged. And he, he goes with the one who says that it was rigged. And then prosecutor comes in and says, well... It was proven to be perfect because the first attorney or advisor said that it was perfect. And therefore, uh, Donald Trump knew that he was lying when he said it was rigged. No, it's like you, you don't know who he actually believed. So I'm not saying just believe what he says. I'm saying you can't <laughs> prove that he's guilty without that definitive proof beyond a reasonable doubt. You know, because it's innocent until proven guilty, not guilty until proven innocent. But it seems like in his case, as was the case with the impeachments as well, they had the man, and then they went and found the crimes. Based upon their predetermined conclusions. On and on and on we go here, though. I remind everyone here that an indictment is only a series of allegations based on a grand jury's determination of probable cause to support the charges. It is now the duty of my office to prove these charges in the indictment beyond a reasonable doubt at trial. She concluded her remarks at that point. In question, she said she would be trying all 19 of the defendants together. 
When asked about the leaked charges that came out earlier on Monday prior to the grand jury voting on whether or not to indict, she refused to answer. No, I can't tell you anything about what you refer to, she said. What I can tell you is that we had a grand jury here in Fulton County. They deliberated till almost 8 o'clock, if not right after 8, and an indictment was returned. It was true build. It was a true build, and we now have an indictment. I am not an expert on clerk's duties or even administrative duties. I wouldn't know how to work that system. And so I'm not going to speculate. Next question. So when it comes to prosecuting anyone related to Trump, she's she's all about getting to the bottom of it, getting to the nitty gritty and uh, speculating and then bringing it to the table in the form of an indictment. But if something is leaked out, she's like, oh, I'm not an expert on that. So, you know, next. Very interesting. You would think with her expertise and with her confidence, her comfortable confidence, uh, she would at least know a little bit rather than just saying, oh, I'm not an expert. <clears throat> I mean, I'm not an expert. And listen to what I have to say about all of this. Huh. <sighs> Who knows, maybe she'll be after me next. On Monday, charges against Trump and co-defendants was leaked online and reported by Reuters. Moments later, those charges were disappeared from Twitter, and the DA's office said the document was fictitious, despite how identical it was. Okay, so if it was fictitious, what did you have, like, a mind reader putting it together in order to ensure that it was identical? I don't know. This document was leaked prior to the grand jury having voted, meaning that the charges were filed prior to the indictment. Speaking of mind readers, I guess that's what Fannie Willis and her grand jury are in this, this case. And they're talking about probable cause and the president's state of mind, while well, the former president's state of mind, and potentially future. Not, not that I, Not that I even want him to run. I mean, he's running already, mostly running his mouth for better or worse, but yeah, not the biggest fan of the man. I'm not a stan, but I'm not a stan for these sorts of legal pursuits either. The indictment revealed that the charges voted on by the grand jury were the same ones that were apparently filed prior to the grand jury having voted on them. It sounds to me like someone is lying. Yeah, but here is the lengthy document. I believe this is the actual, not the original, supposedly fictitious document. Uh, I have that pulled up on another page if I need to reference it at any point. Here's another article from The Hill. I'm almost 50 minutes into this show. I don't intend on going too much further, especially if this is mostly repetitious. In my next show, if if I talk about this in one of my next shows, I'll see if I can provide any more new information. I'm just trying to cover all the bases here, mostly. So I can exit out of some of these tabs and get on with my life. This is actually a very short article. Yeah, there's some interesting stuff in here. District Attorney Fannie Willis late Monday gave former President Trump and 18 co-defendants until noon on August 28 to voluntarily surrender following an indictment that unveiled multiple charges in connection to their attempts to interfere in the 2020 election. Willis, during a press conference, also indicated her desire to try all of the defendants, hoping to begin a trial within the next six months. Trump and other defendants are each charged with one count of violating Georgia's racketeer influence and corruption organization, uh, organizations, RICO, in other words, or other acronyms, ACT, a law typically reserved for organized crime. Uh, Willis said the charge alleges the defendants participated in a criminal enterprise in Fulton County, Georgia, and elsewhere to accomplish the illegal goal of keeping Trump in office. The far-reaching indictment is a result 
of Willis's years-long investigation into Trump's efforts to subvert the 2020 election results. She denied that the investigation is politically motivated. I make decisions in this office based on the facts and the law, Willis said. Uh, the law is completely nonpartisan. Right. It should be. That's how decisions are made in every case to date. Every case to date? Everyone? Come on. You mean to tell me that if Donald Trump wasn't Donald Trump in this case, this case would even exist? I don't think so. I don't think so. I'm not buying that at all. Not for a hot second. Oh, let's see. Some would say, some on the right would say that the fact that she did not bring this indictment forward, well, long ago, and even the time frame which is referenced in the indictment ended like months ago. So she could have brought this forward months ago. And she hasn't. And so some people, especially Donald Trump supporters, are going to say that that's, that in and of itself is proof that she's trying to interfere with the the campaign of Trump. But of course, though Trump supporters and he himself is going to emphasize that point, it is probably true that if she would have brought it forward earlier, he would have just said, they didn't do the due diligence on this. They didn't thoroughly investigate. They're jumping the gun on this. So everyone's going to argue in their own favor regardless of how things go but I'm just saying I'm not really picking up what she's putting down I'm just not but if you want to simp for her or for him for that matter go for it a couple of articles from Washington Examiner Fannie Willis brings Georgia officials before a grand jury as indictment looms okay yeah she did Call several witnesses to testify before a grand jury Monday ahead of an anticipated indictment against former President Donald Trump related to the 2020 election in Georgia. And actually, uh, I believe the names of some of those witnesses were the ones that were under a bit of scrutiny because were they or were they not supposed to be made public? The witnesses included former Democratic state lawmakers Ben Nagayan and Jen Jordan, not Jim Jordan, but Jen Jordan, Secretary of State official Gabrielle Sterling and former Lieutenant Governor Geoff Duncan, among others. And you know what? Because I'm over 50 minutes into this, I might stop here. Save some of this for later. There will be much more to cover, I'm sure, even if not now, or not tomorrow, or not the next day after that. Well, by the time 10 days are up, there will be much more to report on, assuming Donald Trump does not flee the country. And even if that happened, there would still be something to cover. Of course, another article from Washington Examiner, Donald Trump indicted... Attorneys for ex-president call Monday events shocking and absurd. Of course they do. They're his attorneys. He has put out some statements, or at least his, his attorneys have, his team has as well, on his Truth Social account. It's what you would expect. A lot of... Uh, a lot of... Uh, capitalization. You know how Donald Trump is. Though when it's his team putting out the statements, they might sound like what he'd say, but they're typed out in a little bit different of a way. I'm not going to go through this right now. I, I had this pulled up, this clip of Ron DeSantis responding to the indictment. He called it an example of the criminalization of politics. It's a two-second long clip. I don't really feel the need to play it because in most of it, he was talking about what he would do to end the criminalization of politics if he became president. So he himself said he hadn't yet read through all the indictment. But there is a, a link to an article down here from Florida's Voice. 
and I have that article pulled up here. DeSantis denounces Georgia's Trump indictment as criminalization of politics. This is an interesting article. I know there's always an interesting dynamic between Trump and DeSantis, mostly because Trump has been insulting DeSantis endlessly for months and months and months, which is sure a bag of beans. Full of hot air, in other words. But, yeah. People are going to spin this in whatever they way, 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 way they see fit. And yes, that was like a record spin, just so you know, as an intentional uh, DJ performance there. Not intentional. I turned it into that, though. <laughs> I'm losing my voice. My throat is getting very sore right now. So, yeah, I'm going to wrap this show up. I'll talk about DeSantis another time. Since I wanted to keep the focus of this show on Trump anyways. But a last last point, And this is another clip from DeSantis on um, Laura Ingram's show on Fox News. He said, in regards to Trump, he had three years to fire Christopher Wray and he didn't fire him. I remember I went to the rallies in 2016, Laura. You remember them. Lock her up. Lock her up. About holding Hillary accountable. And then two weeks after the election, he said, never mind that I said that and let her off the hook. I give him credit even though, you know, we're competing for the great things he did do. But one of the things he did not do was drain the swamp. The swamp got worse in his four years. And you had people like Ray. You had people in power who were not getting the job done. So I could play the clip, but I went ahead and read the caption just so I could really think about it. Hear it from my own voice. <clears throat> truth be told, he was telling the truth there. Ron DeSantis was telling the truth. The swamp was not drained. Not everyone involved in all of this is a member of the swamp. Fanny Ellis is not directly, at least. But still, it is a little bit ironic that Donald Trump was talking about locking up Hillary Clinton. You know, he was the president, he wasn't a prosecutor, so I guess he, he couldn't go out and just arrest her himself or anything like that, but, you know, he was leading out the chants, essentially, people chanting, lock her up, lock her up, and I, I believe Bill Barr said just recently that shortly after the election, Donald Trump said, no, I don't, I don't think she should actually be locked up, even though he was all for it when he was campaigning, <clears throat> But think of that what you may. Think of all of that what you may. That's all I have to say for now. Why Georgia grand jurors' names are made public and what else to know as Trump investigation comes to a head. Okay, enough. I'll stop now while I'm ahead. Thanks for watching. Keep in touch. Keep in tune. New content is coming soon. Peace.